I'm through with standing in line The clubs I'll never get in It's like the bottom of the ninth And I'm never gonna win this Life hasn't done out quite the way I want it to be Tell me what you want I want a brand new house On an episode of Cribs And a bathroom I can play baseball in And a king size tub big enough for ten plus me <laughs> what you need I'll need a, a credit card everybody uh good evening everybody just a real quick uh video update uh on the lionel restoration the lionel train set restoration little project we got going um i didn't anticipate it was gonna be a lot of episodes anyways i mentioned three or four and that's pretty much we're on track to do that um we're pretty much right at the tail end i had to order a new lock on unit what they call either an E unit, a lock on, reverse unit, or they come in two poles, single pole, I think, three pole or four pole. I'm not sure, but what we got here is a. Uh, well, sh let me put this microphone on my collar and we'll get to work. All right. So, pretty much. What we had to do, we replaced the original transformer, which is identical to this. I managed to find a brand new or a refurbished looking brand new um, one online. It works fantastic. Uh, his original one burst in the back, either the plastic or the stuff inside just finally burst um, power surge or overheated or it was left on for several days, that type of thing. Since it's 1940s type, very hard plastic almost takes on a feel almost kind of like Bakelite it, it once those things break you can, there's nothing you can do you got to toss them maybe keep the innards uh, you might be able to use them for something else down the road but I felt he needed a brand new or at least a refurbished transformer where's my mic hold on a second guys I'm looking for my microphone there it is and we got him one uh, also, what we did is um, he didn't have the wiring and the lock-on unit to connect the transformer to his track so I can test run it and so he could run it around his Christmas tree. So we went ahead and located a brand new set for him. He should be happy as pie when he gets that. Um, what we're working on tonight, and we'll cover a little bit here, is the, um, the Bicerus or the big... The big hook or the crane car, let's call it that. Uh, I did a lot of work to it already. It looks great. Actually, it looks a lot better than last time you guys saw it. And we'll talk about it right now. But 
Tonight what we're going to do is we're going to replace uh, cabling. We're going to replace the, the big giant uh, grappling hook. Um, this, what the part that lifts up the boom is actually not a cable or at least on the model. It looks like some sort of stainless steel wire. So it's never going to break. The boom goes up and down fantastically. I didn't know if the actual cable to lift up our grappling hook was going to operate or not. When I popped this thing open, I was relieved to see everything was there. Everything is fine. We're going to make it run, operate, function, and look fantastic. Um, while I took everything apart, I went ahead and I cleaned it last night. Pretty much I've cleaned everything you see on here. So it looks a lot better and a lot shinier than when it came in. Uh, he should be real happy with that. Also, the only thing left that I have to clean a little bit more is that blue gondola back there you see. And then once we clean it and wash it, we're going to hit that also with um, a semi gloss, a Tamiya. Same thing with this box car, although the box car doesn't need it as much as the gray uh, pipe car, the gondola, uh, definitely the, the Alco PA unit, and his uh, big hook. For what I did do on every single one of these, and this is something probably you want to do as part of your maintenance, do it at least once or twice a year. Every single piece, every part of his equipment here, I went ahead and cleaned the treads of all his wheels because they were all... They all had caked on grime and crud and dirt. And uh, I didn't want that getting back onto the brand new track. That, uh, we also went ahead and got him some brand new track. Um, most pieces were sal um, salvageable. So we saved them and cleaned them up. But we did have to order some brand new stuff. And I didn't want that old crud to get transferred back onto the brand new track. Which would in turn cause pickup issues with the locomotive. Um, so definitely, definitely with your Dremel tool and a polishing wheel. You can use a, a brass wire wheel for standing em stand in emergencies when you don't have your polishing wheel. But a polishing wheel is always... Uh, I got one here handy. I should have one. I guess I don't. But the polishing wheel is always, always the way you want to go. Uh, because you're not going to damage the metal, the tread of your wheels. And you're not going to have all those little wire bristles flying all over your workshop. So, And it, it improves the appearance of the model. It, it stands out. So when he receives this, or anybody receives a restoration project like this, um, they want to see shiny stuff. They, they, you, and you want them to go, ooh, you know, ooh, ah, that looks cool. And that's part of the process. It's not one thing. It's many, many things. And um, as the owner, and I have put myself in this position where I'm the owner, as the owner um, handles throughout the years the, what, what you refurbished for him, he will start to pick out little pieces where he can tell that, oh, wow, okay, somebody took the time and did this, and I can tell just by looking at this part. And that's just an example. Uh, his original caboose had that back piece broken off. Uh, it was nowhere in the original shipping box. So I was either going to have to fabricate one out of sh uh, styrene and then try and... This is not painted red caboose. It's actually molded red plastic. So you will never match the repair to the rest of the body. And the body's already worn too. I located him the identical one. I swapped out his trucks and his floor. So, microphone just popped out of my collar. Um, his trucks and his floor on the, on the new caboose body. Plus, I also cleaned the tread and the wheels on that. By the way, it's a brand new caboose body, so he, it stands out. And he'll be tickled pink. The gondola, what we're going to do with that one last time is we're going to... Uh, clean it with 409 a little bit we'll let it dry we'll clean off all the any crud or sand down any uh, scratches or dents or stuff like that and then we'll go ahead and hit it with Tamiya uh, it wasn't semi-gloss it's just regular Tamiya clear which has a slight semi-gloss finish to it 
So that would be Tamiya Clear. I think it's TF13. Uh, Tamiya Simagloss would also work just as fine. Just as um, I would avoid using automotive clears. Uh, though I, although I do use them and I have used them many, many times in the past, but I do notice that the Tamiya uh, is formulated where it gives you that scale thickness where the automotive clears come close, real close now, um, as the years have come, gone by, but um, the Tamiya gets it every time. And you don't have any running, you don't have the issues with runs, uh, eggshell, Mm, it dries right away. Um, even after it dries, you're not going to leave finger imprints on it by handing it. So, so, um, and because you only have to hit it with one coat, you, even though the cans are small, they last you a long, long time. So you don't have to do that method. So I'm just passing along ideas to you guys that I picked up doing this stuff here. Now everything has had its wheels polished and cleaned. Before the car ship out, we'll put little drops of oils in the bolsters. That way, hopefully, we'll be able to minimize uh, as much noise as possible. So what we did here, basically what I got in the box was just a car like that. It was filthy. Um, the, metal, the, car's, um, the car is 100% made out of metal, the body and everything. It's a stamping, and the handrails on the end are part of that stamping, and they're folded up. In this case, when I got it, the end handrails were smashed all over the place. So we straightened them out. We cleaned them up. Uh, I was just going to go ahead and send it back to them just like this. But I couldn't do that. I had to put some sort of load on there. I did find some styrene pieces I was going to cut up and paint and put on there. But you guys know me. Uh, when I did that, I had to go back the next day and replace them with real metal. It's got a good weight to it. We polished them up. We cleaned them up. I didn't want to paint him black. I wanted him to have something shiny on his flat car. Just so, like I mentioned earlier, he can go ooh and ah. And we cleaned the wheels on this guy too. Uh, let's see what else I can show you guys. Uh, okay. Now on the, the Alco PA unit, no issues anymore, no problems. We kind of cleaned everything up. Remember, I tried to clean and wash the body on this, and for some reason, um, it crazed the clear coat, what was left of the clear coat, and it started to craze the actual body color itself, and it was starting to turn chalky on me, and um, we hit it with that same Tamiya clear, and look at the finish on that. It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. It kept its patina. Uh, it kept all the scratches and all the wear um, the horn, I thought it was plastic, so I was going to shoot it with a, a chrome color on there, a Tamiya chrome color, but no, it's, a metal, it's an actual white metal. Casting, all I did was um, polish it up a little bit and bring it back to life. So that's coming out great also. So um, we figured out the wiring. Uh, I have the correct wiring to put on here. Um, I was hooking it up, getting ready to run. And this thing was not functioning well. And this is the electronic E unit or electronic reverser or the, the, um, the lockout units. They go by various names. The, although this one looks very not abused or worn, it does have issues. And I think maybe the magnetic field of the coils there is probably starting to wear out or wear down throughout the years. Um, there's many, many videos on YouTube how to rewire one of these things. And those guys, I'll tell you what, man, I salute them. They've, they've got the nuts to do that. I don't. It just looks like a lot of work. When I could buy, I just bought a brand new in the pack from Lionel, identical unit. Just slap it on here and I'll hook up the wires. And I only paid eight bucks for it. So you start, you start to, you start to do calculations in your head of how much is your free time worth. And uh, as opposed to how much do you think this is worth compared to your free, your free time. In my particular case, because I work full time and I'm doing this on the side and I've got to take care of a house and other issues. Um, my free time, my personal free time is this will never compare to my personal free time. 
and uh, it was an easy um, choice. I just went ahead and bought the replacement, just like the lockout unit and everything else. So uh, I've got all sorts of wiring diagrams and schematics. This is a piece of cake. We kind of already figured it out. Uh, we cleaned it up, cleaned up the wheels. We got brand new rollers for... Brand new rollers for the electrical pickup. And he should have, when this thing runs on the track, it runs a lot quieter than I ever imagined. And it runs a lot smoother. And uh, the headlight works. Let me back off on the zoom here. Headlight works fine. Everything is good. Comp and then when you hook it up with this brand new clear coated shell, she's going to be a million, million dollars. Um, I did a lot of work on the engine or the motorless, the electronic, electric motor. We cleaned up the brushes. We cleaned up old solder. We had to take all the original line of wiring off because I think what happened, why the wiring on those things, why the solder joints on the wiring on those Lionel uh, solder jobs from many, many years ago, um, why it crumbles is because um, I think they, they must have used the cheapest solder paste. And there's different types of paste. The paste you buy now, the paste I use when I use paste, I also have the the more liquid kind, um, different types of that too. But the li the solder paste you buy now is like, uh, has the consistency of petroleum jelly or, um, you know, um, that cream you ladies put on their hands or, or butter, you know, that type thing, uh, toothpaste. The cheaper, and uh, they may not sell it or allow it anymore or use it in this country because of the chemicals that were involved. And I don't remember the chemicals off the top of my head, but the cheaper versions of that is very, um, it's, it's sort of soft, it's pasty, but it's like real leady, like lead. And, and uh, you could, it's like real, real soft, extremely soft lead as opposed to something that's like a gel. So when you do your solder, your, you do your soldering connections using that, older type paste uh, you need to wash your joint right away after you're done doing that very very well make sure you get all that acid all that resin off of there because what happens if you don't that stuff starts to eat itself and it'll crumble on you and um, that's what happened here so um, uh, my recommendation that what I did here you can see the shiny soldering joint is get rid of all the wiring Get rid of all the soldering joints that I know put in their factory many, many years ago and put brand new solder joints using today's modern soldering products. And I, I use a regular tin, uh, 6040. Uh, the one that used to sell radio shack is regular. Uh, no, use, no use to use silver solder or anything like that. Uh, you can use a regular simple soldering iron. You don't have to use your resisting soldering unit or a, a torch or anything like that. Um, very, very easy to work on, very basic, very elementary, and this would be a great, great project for someone who's starting out, and by using these techniques, you're going to unknowingly pick up uh, your skills in terms of, um, do you know how to solder? Have you soldered before? And, um, and wiring, you, you'll lose the fear of wiring and reading schematics and drawings and all that stuff and ohms and testing circuits and all that good stuff. And all that stuff can only benefit you uh, now, in the near future, and in the future way down the road. So enough talking about this guy here. We're almost done with this video here. Uh, let's see here. Mm, okay. Let's hope this thing doesn't pop out of my collar. All righty. So we went ahead, your, your cab on your crane car has two tabs on the front, one tab on the back. So you kind of push inwards, or outwards, I'm sorry, on the two front ones, it pops up like this. For those of you who have never taken one of these apart. And the rear tab just pops right off. The cab won't come off loosey-goosey, it's still connected to the boom with that big giant uh, threaded rod inside. You, you see there, it looks like a long bolt and the threads are right there. That cork screws either in or out and that's what raises your boom up and down. And the stainless steel cables you see right here are not operated by the actual 
crank itself. Rather, the crank turns the large piece of plastic of the boom and um, the wires are connected to the end. So it gives you that even though it's got roller, um, these roller things up here, it, it's it's non-functional. It's just there for looks. So that's functional. I'm going to put drops of oil. I cleaned this last night. It looks great. I shot that clear coat on here. It looks fantastic. Look at that. This body itself, as I was working on it, I don't know if you guys see it on the last videos, but uh, she, the, she was starting to get faded. She had a lot of solder dents in there, like where a heat gun was placed against the body, many different areas. And uh, the body is not painted red. It's molded red plastic, and it was starting to turn pinkish. You can see the pink hues uh, starting to take over the body because the plastic was drying out over the years. And um, I had no choice but to hit it with that clear, but I was confident in doing it. And I knew how it was going to look out because I had already done it on uh, the locomotive and oh, so far just the locomotive and this. But I do it on my models like you guys do all the time. So we got our other wheel up here, so we'll have no problem running. A cable line from this crank here will tie it off on one end, run it through the boom, down through that swivel thing there. It'll drop down and it'll function up and down by turning that crank. And uh, that's made out of metal. It's some sort of white metal. It's got real good weight to it. So that should look fantastic. Um, I borrowed this cable uh, string uh, from my Ravel. You guys remember that big rig, big rig tow truck, that rotator that Ravel did in 125th scale? This is what I swiped that from, so I'm going to have to replace. I got plans for that tow truck kit. I got a tow truck kit back here, brand new in the box. Not brand new, kind of box already been fiddled with. But um, I'm going to replace as many parts on that kit when I get to that kit with metal. So um, I have no problem giving this up. I'll probably use real cable, steel cable, or copper cable, some sort of cable when I get to that project. Maybe I'll work on that project next. Who knows? But um, And there's your steel rollers for your, your pickup. Those are easy to pop on and off. And you can tell I got a lot of these components from trains.com. Trains.com. You can go on their website or you can go on their eBay site. And uh, they got gobs of gobs and gobs of trains and models and parts and all scales. It's a good outfit now to shop from. Uh, we used, me and them used, to, me and this company used to go at it pretty good about 20 years ago. We did not like each other, but uh, they're actually really, really darn good at what they're doing right now and i have no problem buying stuff from them um now any anymore it's um hold on one second Let's see what's going on here uh, all right so pretty much he'll have a leftover caboose um when i'm done with this he'll have um Leftover caboose, he'll have brand new tracks, he'll have a leftover transformer, um, and that's about it. Um, that electronic lockout unit, sh or the E-unit, should be coming in any day this week. As soon as it gets here, I'm actually going to put it on the, the model and start wiring it. I got to get this train track assembled on the floor, either in my uh, kitchen, my dining room, or maybe outside in the driveway. And uh, uh, make sure it runs great. Film it. My ex is getting me his number. I'm going to give him a call and I'm going to deliver it to him or have it delivered. He lives here uh, just down the, the freeway a little bit along the coast. And uh, he's going to be tickled pink and so am I. And I can't wait. And that will allow me to clear space on my workbench so I can attack other projects.
All right, you guys take care.